Hello and welcome back and that's right it's time for another Plex Media Server test and this time we're looking at the Synology DS224 Plus and much like my other videos we're going to be looking pretty much exclusively at 4K media but before we go any further a few disclaimers straight off the bat number one this is what you're going to be seeing throughout the course of this video. I'm going to disappear in a moment, but what you can see just above me there is uh, two browser windows there. The left one being uh, the access to the NAS panel there and Plex, where we're going to play back our media. And the right-hand side of the screen is so we can monitor the utilization of resources by this NAS throughout the course of the whole test. And a number of you are probably going to query why we are utilizing the web browser. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know exactly why. But if we click this icon down here at the bottom you may be wondering why are we not using the mobile client why aren't we using the amazon fire tv client why aren't we using you know anything really other than uh, the web browser that's because throughout the course of this video i am going to be bench testing different kinds of tests i'm going to be testing different file formats i'm going to be testing different compression techniques ultimately i'm going to be testing different kinds of media in order to see how well the nas either has to convert it or plays it natively because a number of devices you use may not have an hevc license on board they may not allow uh, client side conversions for one reason or another it's just easier to show in the web browser different kind of permutations of playback where I can actually control the conversions lowering or heightening the resolution as needed in order to preserve bandwidth whether you are utilizing this multimedia on the train on the commute you're on holiday or a family member on the other side of the world is streaming this media and they're using a knackered old Nokia or their internet connection is absolute pants one way or another conversions or transcoding or encode decode all of these things can be important to a certain subset of users and that's kind of one of the main reasons why the Synology DS224 Plus is a NAS with question marks for users out there. Why is that? Well, for a little while, you know, better part of 18 months, Synology rolled out different NAS solutions, all of which were not using uh, CPUs that featured integrated graphics. Why is integrated graphics important? Well, nice and simple. Remember that encode, decode, conversion, transcode, all that stuff I mentioned? Well, if you do not do not have uh, a CPU with integrated graphics or a dedicated graphics card in your Plex Media server, then you're going to be using raw CPU power in order to get those changes done. And unfortunately, that uses way more power on a CPU because you're doing kind of a more graphical tailored um, process, which a CPU, unless it has integrated graphics on board, is going to just have difficulty with and just be inefficient in terms of its power usage when it's handling the instructions to and from now i mentioned about uh, slight areas of contention the ds224 arrives with this cpu the intel celeron j4125 now on the plus side it's a celeron it's got integrated graphics on the downside, this is a CPU that Synology were already using way back in 2019 and 2020. So a lot of users are wondering if it can still cut mustard because multimedia has got more aggressive. And on top of that, this system, unlike the DS920 that came before it, this system only arrives with two gig of memory. Now, the reason that's important, and I know I've bent your ear for quite a while now, but in the case of this test, it's even more important than normal. In DSM 7.2, the base level amount of memory that your system's utilizing with just a handful of applications does creep up. And Plex Media Server itself has a recommendation of at least 2 gig of memory for handling higher end multimedia. And definitely 4K and definitely if conversions are going to come into the fold. And 2 gig of memory, you can see here, Plex is running, sure. But we're already using around 40% or 41%, if I max that out and get rid of myself on the bottom of the screen, so I'll see you at the end of the video. Um, we're already utilizing 41% of memory, and we've not done anything. Now, when it comes to the background processes, if we go to the connections there, task manager even, we can see by listing by memory how much memory certain things are doing. As you can see, Plex with nothing playing is using around 90 megabytes of memory. Uh, let's cycle that down there, make sure we can see everything appropriately. But as you can see, Plex is utilizing about 89 meg and the system DSM is utilizing there at the top 149. 
But the memory um, caching and buffering on a Synology actually holds on to memory as well. It reserves memory in the background uh, with that cached memory in order to expand its utilization as needed. And then it will start flushing that cache as more apps run. So it sounds good, right? Well, it means that whereas most of my Plex Media Server tests, I have become preoccupied with the CPU, in this video, we're going to have to look at the RAM utilization there. Because though I've got lots of apps listed here, it's worth highlighting that on uh, the app center here, you're going to be able to see that I've actually stopped a lot of apps. A lot of these applications you can see here, they've got the word run next to them. That means I have disabled those apps. It means although they're installed, I've stopped them from running right now. So on the face of it, it may seem like a lot of applications are running, but there isn't actually that many. And the system is clearly reserving a lot of the memory in case it's needed. So although we're going to be looking at the CPU, just glance at the RAM every now and then, because that may be pertinent. But let's head into Plex. We're utilizing the same 4K trailers that we always use. These 4K files, I've got to say, sometimes these be really problematic on the channel in terms of getting flagged for copyright and stuff. So I will have to mute this uh, as we go along. Sorry, I didn't touch the right button there. But for now, let's go into our first file, Into the Cave of Wonders. It's a 4K file, H.265, 12 megabits per second, 24 frames per second, MP4. We open up down there. We're playing it back, as you can see, in the original format there. We'll come out again and again. We can look down at this file here at the bottom. As you can see, you've got light orange and dark orange. Now, the light orange is playback. The dark orange is caching and buffering there in the background, getting the file laid out the same way you would uh, tracks for a train. So as you can see right now, it's playing like a dream. And we can fast forward, instant recognition. Fast forward again, instant or near instant recognition. Then we're seeing no impact there on the CPU or the memory. Now, let's say... Um, with this next file, we go to the next one. Now, this next file is actually a little bit different. This is where we introduce H.264 or HEVC. Now, again, if you're using devices that have an HEVC license or HEVC support or client-side transcoding, you should be fine. If you're using a PlayStation, if you're utilizing an Amazon Fire TV, just a number of different devices out there that do not have client-side transcoding or native support of HEVC, you will find that the system will need to transcode it. So let's play back this file and you're gonna see a slightly different output to what we saw before. First and foremost, at the bottom, it immediately changes to convert. And we can see that it's had to convert the file into a more suitable file format there. On the right-hand side of the screen, we've started to see that rise there in CPU utilization and memory utilization. Again, the light orange is not being outpaced by buffering. In other words, this file, although it's 45 seconds long, if it was an hour, if it was two hours long, it would still play fine because we've got the hardware resources there but nevertheless the spike you can see there of memory utilization is very hard to ignore remember the green one is just plex but we're still seeing an oddly high rise there of the cpu utilization uh, sorry the memory utilization as that caching and that holding of memory takes place there in the background cpu not so bad it played the file great news let's move on to our next one Another HEVC file. This time with half the bit rate there at 29 megabits per second. So let's go ahead and play back that file there. And again, we see a slight delay. Because obviously, the file needs to be converted in this case. Again, if you've got the license, you'll be fine. Um, but if we play back there, this should be a very quick file playback. We're seeing that spike in memory, just a fraction more uh, over the predecessor. And CPU utilization, fine. And again, if we skip forward this time, just to see how the system reacts, we should see it catch up ever so slightly, but it's these kind of skip aheads where that maximum memory is going to be problematic because buffering, although of course it has its impact on CPU utilization as you are playing different file types, when it comes to caching, memory is king. And therefore that delay we saw was slightly longer than I would have liked to have seen. Still great still playing back like a dream and you can almost certainly play back multiple files but right now with this uh, quality here hevc 
it's kind of you're seeing that memory limitation really rear its ugly head just a little bit there again you may not see this depending on how you use the system but it's just worth keeping an eye on nevertheless there now this time we make our way into the trailers this time we're going to go into june uh, this is a 4k file an hevc file we're going to skip the wonder woman one because we know h.264 will play absolutely fine but this is quite a hefty file here uh, and we're going to open that up get the and we're playing in the original quality here so we're able to play it lovely stuff and again this could be to do with an audio uh, codec that we've got support of now but what we're going to do is play back that file we're seeing that spike initially of the cpu there as we're able to play it back and we'll skip ahead forward and again, because we've got that native playback, we're not seeing too many of the difficulties we saw earlier on. But this time, we're going to transcode it down. So let's transcode down to uh, 1080p. This is another area where we're almost certainly going to see that CPU spike uh, kind of make itself known. We're seeing the memory spike once again, but it's not too bad. It's actually quite reasonable. And therefore, I'm more than happy to call the playback of this file, both in its original quality and via the conversion, um, an absolute success for me here. So next up, we carry on. And this time, we're going to make our way down to the Batman. And again, the Batman, another H.264. But this is a 32 megabits per second file there. I'm going to open it up, so it will play back in original quality. But it's quite a hefty 4K file indeed. And we are almost certainly going to see a slight delay because of that higher frame rate there. Less so about the compression codec, but more about that bit right there. But it's still playing like a dream. So let's fast forward, because we knew it would play. And there was a slight delay there because of the bit rate, but it will catch up. But for now, we're seeing the CPU spikes. I think the highest we've seen was here, with Plex at 27%. And ultimately right now, I'm happy with what we're seeing here overall. Again, not too much criticism, very comparable to our Plex Media Server testing of the DS423+. Plus. We're seeing those delays as we skip around, but again, the bitrate could be a part of that. Uh, so next up, we can have a look at Avengers Endgame. Skip ahead to that one, open this up in our new tab. We're playing in original quality again, H.264, but now an even higher 40 megabits per second bitrate there. Going to see a slight delay. We've seen the initial CPU spike that we've come to expect at this point, but we're still playing this file and it's still running pretty darn well. Going along, and again, after this, I will take a brief hiatus as we make our way over to the Jellyfish files, but for now, playing the file in the original quality, even using quite a dense audio uh, compression codec there, but this time, let's push the boat out a little bit. Let's go down to 480p, and this is going to push this NAS hard. Because although, yes, a 480p version of this file isn't going to be big, the system still has to downgrade that rather dense file down to 480p. So expect utilization to slightly spike. But again, not too bad. Quite happy with that there. We're still seeing that memory overall utilization quite high, something we sort of expected. And maybe if you're running more apps, the system would uh, more intelligently uh, empty out that cache as needed but still nonetheless although we're seeing those spikes it is still playing very well and overall for that second major conversion i'm quite happy with what we've seen here now i mentioned earlier on we'll take a very brief hiatus it may have come to people's attention recently about the need or not need of conversions on NASes, and particularly when you're taking advantage of plex media service transcoding um in later versions of uh, Plex Media Server, they have introduced uh, better means to manage your uh, transcoding. So if you have multiple transcoders, if you're utilizing a graphics card, for example, you can actually select it now quite manually which ones you want to use. And using a Plex Pass has always been the go-to means with which to really take advantage of hardware transcoding. I know some people aren't a big fan of having to pay a license to take advantage of native hardware transcoding, but given the kind of value of plex and that a lifetime pass astoundingly still exists i think a lot of users have quite liked the idea that they can at least tailor and uh, select which transcoding hardware inside their system they can choose again we can utilize dlna if we choose to there's lots of ways in which we could have catered this to be even better suited to a local access environment but overall i mean right now with uh, native converting 
uh, being utilized in Plex on this rather humble affordable device even if the CPU inside this device is starting to show its age a little bit isn't too shabby. But what about if we push the boat out to some really demanding stuff? This is when we look at the jellyfish files. Those of you that have followed the channel before will be aware of this. We have a selection of 4K and 1080p files that are remarkably dense, where the bit rate really does kill. So, for example, we have a 30 megabits per second H.264 file here. Playing natively, this should play back like an absolute dream. I'll be straight with you, right now while I'm talking to you, there is a helicopter going just past my building. So I'm going to carry on, but don't be surprised if you hear a thundering there in the background while I talk. Leave it in. I hope you caught some of that. Um, as you can see, original playback there, absolutely fine, but that's because that H.264 file. But if we go for the H.265 file, we're going to be able to see if that native compression is still supported. And we can. So definitely the audio co uh, codec has been largely taken care of there. Um, and I would argue as well, we were talking earlier on um, about support of HEVC. It's worth highlighting that some users may still not be aware that on a Synology, if you go to the App Center, you can download the advanced media extension to enable like HEVC on native Synology applications in the system. It's not wholly covering of uh, playback on Plex Media Server, of course, but it's still a nifty advantage to have, particularly for those of you that are interested in taking advantage of Video Station, of course. But We'll come out of that one. We're going to move things up away from 1080p and into the 4K. Let's go for some native H.264 4K playback here. 120 megabits per second. Now, the files we're going to be looking at for the next few minutes, arguably, these are files that most people simply do not own. That bit rate is going to be absolutely killer for a lot of uh, remote access. And even now, we're not seeing the NAS take much of a run-up at this process. It's going to try, but as you can see, we're not even seeing any kind of conversions or codecs. The same goes if we go for one of the denser files there, such as these two here, which are absolute killer files in terms of uh, multimedia playback. Very few people have a 400 megabit 4K file, but just for the hell, I always play it simply because you never know. And thanks to things like conversions or converting automatically, there is always the potential for NASs with sufficient hardware under their belt that, although can't play heavy duty files natively, do have the potential, as you see here, to at least attempt or sometimes succeed in playing uh, converted versions of those files. And as you can see, it is converting it. This modest little NAS is converting that file. It has converted it down uh, to 10,000 megabits per second, um, which I think is quite strange. Um, but if we look at it there, it still managed to convert the file down uh, rather than that 400 megabit there. I'm not sure what to make of that number there. But still, nonetheless, it has attempted it. And I'm not sure if the file was longer than 30 seconds, it would succeed in um, out, uh, you know, remaining outpaced by conversions. But still, nonetheless, the DS224 Plus has handled a lot of our initial testing of Plex Media Server very, very well. It's just a question of that memory uh, utilization there at two, T, uh, 2 gig, if you're going to be utilizing a bevy of Synology applications at the same time and having to rely a lot more on the system intelligently emptying that cache because if it doesn't do it right, you are going to find the odd bump along the way. But this has been initial testing in 4K of Synology DS224+. Plus. We're going to be returning to this NAS and this subject very soon indeed, and something that will become very clear soon. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, stay tuned for the channel for more clex related content coming soon, as well as MB and some comparisons along with Jellyfin. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.